because we are able to reach out and touch your presence as you abide with us in this worship. We ask God that you would stay here with us, that you would move through us, not only here in this building, but for all of those who are worshiping in their homes, in their cars, on their jobs, walking down the street, in the hospital room. We ask God that you would abide there as well so that we are a community of believers, although we may not be in the same space, we have the same mind and the same desire. 
and that is to worship you. We thank you for the music even now that will be lifted up as incense. We ask that you would receive it and send down your glory. We thank you for the preached word that will be lifted up by the woman of God who will bring the word of God to the people of God. Open our hearts and our minds so that we receive the seeds that will be planted so that it will be watered and you will get the increase. We love you, God. We praise you, God. We magnify you. And we thank you for the privilege of praise and worship. We thank you for the privilege of prayer. Because it's not, we don't take it lightly, but we're grateful. And we're grateful that you've given us hearts to want to serve you. This we ask in the name of your son, Jesus, and for his sake. Amen. Amen. As we continue in worship and honor of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, we're going to lift up, if you have the African American hymnal at home, or if you know the song, it's hymn 540. It's lift every voice and sing. Amen. Lift every voice and sing. Uh, Brother Greg will lead us in this wonderful hymn.
Amen. But 100 years ago, the Negro still is not free. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the malices of segregation and the chains of dis discrimination. 100 years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. 100 years later, the Negro still languishes in the corners of American society and finds himself and herself an exile in their own land. And so we've come here today to dramatize a shameful condition. Those words were spoken by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in the year that I was born, 1963. And here in 2024, those words are still true. I heard a woman say that for the white man, this is the land of the free. But for the black and brown people, this is the home of the brave. Dr. King was brave. He did not set out to be the man that has uh, a statue of him looking over the Potomac River as a monument to what he did. He did not set out to be a martyr for the cause. He honestly didn't necessarily want to do what he did. But he had a spirit of yes. And it's the same spirit that our pastor is asking us to step into, to say yes. Even though it may be difficult, say yes. Even though you may not be appreciated, say yes. Even though you may not get accolades and, and get all of the things you think you should get by saying yes, say yes. Dr. King said yes, and as a result, there have been some changes, but there's so much more that needs to be. And so as we remember and honor Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., let us also remember Coretta Scott King, who really sacrificed her husband for a greater good. Let us remember his children, who grew up without a father because people couldn't stand the idea of a United States of America. So let us do all that we can even as we continue and we seek God's face on what we need to say yes about, as we work and toil here at Dayspring, let us just remember that our yes is symbolic because it always reminds us of those people like Dr. King and others who went on before us, who walked, who were jailed, who were beaten, who were abused, who were lynched, who were killed, all for the sake of the land of the free and the home of the brave. So let's just take a moment of silence to remember the sacrifices of Dr. King and others. welcome you here and in the building as well as those of you virtually we welcome you to Day Spring Community Church where our pastor Reverend Dr. Cynthia Turner Wood leads this flock and we're grateful that you stopped by whether you're watching us live or whether it's weeks from now that you stumble across this worship and God placed it on your house to just on your hearts to stay and listen we're grateful that you sacrificed your time. We're still looking forward to you actually coming in the building. We don't mind you watching, but we'd love to see you, to give you a hug, a high five, a fist bump, something so that you would just come and worship with us. Because there's nothing like being in the place and feeling the power and presence of God and being with like-minded people. If you are a member of a church, 
we ask that you would take our greetings back. But if you would just, um, for lack of a better term, you're just searching for churches. You're going from worship to worship. We're not a perfect church, but we are a church that strives for, respect, for, for perfection daily. Amen. And we have a pastor who I can tell you has a relationship with God that is par none. And she will love on you, and she would tell you herself that she would love to be your pastor. We ask that something that's said and done in the worship will be transforming for you. And that you would take the words and the, and the experience and share it with your family and friends everywhere. Once again, we welcome you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, now it's time where we can all participate. It's time to give. Amen. Amen. And there are many ways to give if you're doing it virtually, or if you like me and you like to do it electronically, you can text the word THRIVE to 73256. You can also use Givelify and look for Dayspring Community Church, Lano, Maryland. You can cash out your gifts to dollar sign Dayspring MD. You can use Realm and give that way. Or if you like mailing your gifts, you can do so by mailing it to P.O. Box 1971. Now this is a new address, P.O. Box 1971, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20902-2911. We're just thankful and grateful for whatever you can give. And if those of you who are here would stand, amen. And if you'll face out and walk around, and put your gifts in the basket, even if you give it electronically, we ask you to come by and touch the basket just to acknowledge that you have given and you and that you're grateful for what you have given unto God. Amen. We ask that you would bless those who have given, that you would bless those with the desire, change and transform their lives so they're able to give with abundance. We ask that you would take these gifts, God, and help us to use them to build your kingdom here on earth. This we ask in your name. Amen. 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 If you will be seated, and we're going to have our announcements for this morning by our own pastor. Thank you, Mr. Renee. Good morning, church. Good morning. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. On the second Sunday in January of a brand new year, we praise God for that. Just a few quick announcements for you. Um, our theme this year, as you know, is saying yes to God. So if you are um, um, been hesitant about what you feel the Lord is tapping you to do or have felt the Lord tap you to do over time, we're asking that you stop ask, say, stop saying, huh, to the Lord and say, yes, Lord, I hear you and I am willing to do it because God will never call you to do something that God is not preparing and equipping you to do. Let the church say amen. amen. And on that note, we're asking you then to um, take part in Bible study, which takes place on Wednesday nights by, via Zoom. We are having a good time in Bible study. We had 15 last week. Somebody amen. say amen. 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 That may not sound like a whole lot to a lot of people, but that's a whole lot to us. Amen. amen. And so um, as we grow together, we want to encourage you. Our preaching will be based on what we are studying in the Bible. Our teaching, our everything will be um, centered around what we are doing together so that we can march forward as a church. And so uh, this theme the theme for this year's preach, uh, this uh, season's preachment is Draw Me Nearer, Draw Me Nearer, Lord, which goes right into our Experiencing God Bible study and coincides with that. So if you want to be on track 
and not feel like you are catching up or left out, please join Bible study. There's still time for you. We can get a book for you. You can follow along, play catch up, do whatever you need, um, but to um, be in line with everything else. I want to thank everybody else who has been, who has given to our sock drive. We thank you. There's somebody's toes will be warm because of you. And so um, we praise God for you. Some brought socks, some donated money, um, and we're just glad for us being um, the kind of congregation that thinks about others, um, even in times like these, especially in times like these. And then finally, for those of us who spent the first two weeks or parts thereof fasting and praying, um, today is the day that you can break that fast. Amen. Somebody else shout out to you. But you it's also a peace day, as we know, for those of us who follow the liturgical dance uh, calendar anyway. Um, but our fast has ended. We hope that you have been strengthened by that. You have a little bit of a reprieve right up until February 14th when we will begin our Lenten fast. So go ahead and do what you need to do in between time and, um, and have a good time. But we thank God for your fasting and praying because we know that that brings strength to the body, not just to you, but also to the entire body of Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 And God bless you. We are going to move into our um, sermon selection by Brother Greg Watkins, and after that will be the Word of God. If you want to follow along, you can go ahead and turn in your Bibles to uh, Psalm 20. Thank you very much. Psalm 20, the entire Psalm, Psalm 20, uh, on today. Uh, turn in your Bibles and get prepared for that as you are ministered to in Psalm. Amen.
opportunity to gather. Thank you that out of the 168 hours you have given us this week, you allotted this time for us to come together to give your name glory and praise. We want to thank you. Thank you for watching over our families and for watching over us, for providing for all of our needs, for making ways out of no way. So we glorify and we honor you for calling us, awakening us this morning and allowing us this amazing new day, this new season in human history, this new moment in life. We surrender you, surrender this moment to the Holy Spirit, yes, God. yearning to hear afresh and anew, to know that you have spoken to us. And so God, we ask that we not get distracted by anything that's trying to distract us. Help us to bring our full selves into this moment, whether we are in the room or whether we are on the line. 
Bring all of us together, even now, Lord. Connect us by your power. For we seek your, your holy will today. As a preacher, I pray for power in the preaching. Pray for purpose and a word that will so surely move our hearts and transform our minds and show us the way that we cannot help but see you fresh and anew. Show up today, God. Show up. And then show out. We thank you for being so kind and so faithful because we confess that we need you. We need you in our lives, so express yourself today. Do what you want to do. Our ears are inclined, God. Our thoughts are perched in anticipation of what you want to do. And our hearts yearn for you to touch us afresh one more time. So apprehend this moment, God, we pray. Take it and use it to your own glory. Have your way in it. Live in it. Dance in it. Do what you want to do in it. So that we, when we leave this place, we may profess together that indeed we have been with the Lord. Yes, God. We ask you, Lord, this because we know the power that you have. We know that you have purpose and plans for our lives. And Lord, we sit and stand in full anticipation of seeing you reveal yourself in ways that we've never even seen us seen before. Startle us again, Lord, by the presence and the power of your word and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen, amen, amen and amen. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Isn't it good to celebrate one more time that the Lord has decided to keep our name on the wake up list? one more time to give us access and entree and even though technology does not always cooperate it's okay we um we uh celebrate what the lord like is doing and has done and is going to do in our lives turn with me if you will in your bibles to psalm 20. psalm 20. i'm going to read the whole psalm but focus on verse 7. psalm 20 if you are able stand where you are in the presence of the Lord. It reads this way in my Bible. It may read a little differently in yours, but in, together we will hear the word of the Lord. Amen. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your victory and in the name of our God set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now, may the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will help his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with mighty victories by his right hand. Here's verse 7. Some take pride in chariots mm -hmm. and some in horses, but our pride is in the name of the Lord our God. They will collapse and fall, but we shall rise and stand upright. Give victory to the King, O Lord, and answer us when we call. This is the word of God for the people of God. We do give thanks unto God. Some take pride in chariots and some in horses. Actually, it really says in the Hebrew, some in chariots and some in horses. They just added pride in there for us to help us to understand. But our pride is in the name of the Lord our God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk from the subject, who else but God? Yes. Who else but God? It was just about one year before his assassination mm -hmm. that Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. cautioned us to be aware of becoming misguided by the wrong things. Yes. He said, 
we must rapidly begin the shift from a thing-oriented society to a person-oriented society. Mm -hmm. Because when machines and computers and profit motives and property rights are considered more important than people, that's when that, that giant triplets of racism, extremism, and materialism are incapable of being conquered. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just break that down for you. He wanted us to understand that where we place our trust and what we choose to prioritize uh -huh. will have great implications for how we live and what the outcome of our living will be. Yes. Although that was more than half a century ago, the potency of Dr. King's words still ring true today. For although we grasp for help from many sources when our backs are up against the wall, uh -huh. only God is worthy of our trust. Yes, yes, for it is God who sends the help we need. But the choice is always ours to take it or to leave it. Yes. Can I say that one more time? Okay. For it is God who sends the help we need. Uh -huh. But the choice is ours, whether we take it or whether we leave it. Amen. Here it is. If we choose worry and fear and anguish and selfishness as our meat, then we will always live beneath our portion because God did not give us a spirit of fear, yes. but of power and of love. And come on, a sound mind. Yes. If we elect to live in shallow places, feeding on the pettiness and small-mindedness of ego, we will forever escape the more abundant life that Christ came to offer us. Mm -hmm. If we choose hatred and wickedness and ostracism as our outlook, then we will live in a constant state of victimhood and isolation. Because the Bible says, so let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. And anyone who does not love does not know God, because yes. God is love. If we choose material trinkets and showpieces to satiate our lust, then we will always be in a constant state of unsatisfaction. Mm. Because there will always be the chase for the newer the better, the latest version of whatever it is we want to show off. And rem remember, God says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth yeah. where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven. Uh -huh. For where your treasure is, there your heart is also. If we desire to fill up on popularity and parties and applause, then we will suffer the thirst for constant acceptance and approval from places and people that were never intended to be your hope for the future. For our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood yes. and his righteousness. In other words, you've got to choose what it is and whom you will follow. For, for, for it says in the text that some will trust in horses and some in chariots, but we, somebody say, but we, okay. but we trust in the name of the Lord, our God. Yes. Your choice will determine how you will live and what will be the foundation that girds and sustains you in times of trouble. Mm -hmm. And this is important. This is important because the truth of the matter is for far too many of us, it doesn't take much to turn our focus and our attention away from God. Amen. Give us a little bit of success and a yeah. little bit of fame yeah. and a little bit of ease and all oh, throw in some wealth and some power and we are gone quickly in some other direction. Amen. Those things can lure us into believing our own press, believing in horses and chariots, but don't fall for that. Stay steady in God, stay true to the Lord, for some will trust in chariots yes. and some in yes. horses, but we, 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 the children of God, believe in the name of the Lord our God, for it is in that name that we have the victory. Amen. Amen. Now, 
That's what makes this psalm one of the most beautiful ones in the catalog of psalms. It was a psalm of David the king, meaning here that it, this one was written by David and about David. But here's the catch. It was to be read and sung on the eve of battle by the people who were in David's kingdom. Uh -huh. It's a little bit different from the other Psalms. This one is written for the people to recite before David goes into battle. Um, um, it, it, it's it's meant, meant to be sung and read on the eve of the battle by the people who would gather around and declare these words on behalf of the king. The king would say, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. Yeah. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary, give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard you with favor, uh, your burnt offerings. May he grant your heart's desires and fill all, fulfill all your plans. Isn't that a beautiful prayer? That's a beautiful prayer for any of us. It's a heartfelt send off for one who is about to go to war that has embedded in it some of the lessons for those of us who have to go to battle for ourselves. Yes. Now, it reminds us first to remember not to go into battle without first stopping to pray. Amen. 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 Yes. I know. Amen. You said, Pastor, you mean I got up? You what you you I, I got up and came to church for you to tell me to pray before I go into battle. I know that sounds simple, but too often when we face opposition, we run headlong into the battle, relying yeah. on our own tools and our own weapons, yeah. thinking that we will be enough, thinking we know how to fix it, thinking we've got the answers, uh -huh. or we run away from the battle, forgetting that we've got somebody who's got the answer and who's got the tools. Yeah. We forget that the enemy does not fight fair. But that the enemy is armed with the chariots and the horses and that we don't have the same thing. This is written for people who understand that there are problems that are so big that they can't handle themselves. There are chariots and there are horses and they have none of that. There are Uzis and automatic weapons and all they have are pistols. There are These are people who understand that they are up against some things that they cannot handle by themselves. And, 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 and but however, we have a tendency before we realize we can't do it on our own to try to do it anyway. We try to go headlong first and, and it's an imbalanced battle. And until we remember that there is power in prayer. Yes. Yes. For who else but God can deliver us when we are in too deep? Right. Who else but God is able to bring us up, up out of the miry clay? Who else but God is able to lift up our bowed down heads and give us courage even when we feel despair? So that when the obstacles are so big in front of us and we are sure they are over to take us, who else but God is able to remind us that God with us uh, can conquer anything that we are going through, that we are co-workers together with God, so that even when the obstacles are so big, that's why David could write this psalm. David could write this psalm with assuredness because David has gone up against Goliath before. Yes. Right? Yes. Stood toe to toe, unarmed with nothing but five smooth stones. Who else but God could have been able to see him through that battle? Uh, who else but God could have given him the confidence to stand there and take it and, and, and throw with a slingshot one smooth stone that took David out so he didn't need the other four. He could drop the other four yes. and say yes. that God has brought him through. Who else but God can put a thousand to flight and two can put ten thousand to flight? He knew that if God be for us, who could be against us? For the Lord is strong and mighty, and the Lord is mighty in battle. So lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who yeah. else but God yes. was able to do that? Mm -hmm. But notice also how carefully David words this. He says, you need to understand that the battles are real. Yes. Yes. Don't, 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 don't discount the battles. They are real. Yes. So yes. while the prayer is that David would win the battle, mm -hmm. let's be clear that the victory belongs to God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I find it interesting that they pray to the God of Jacob. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. You open that up, you read it, it says we pray, our prayer is to the God of Jacob. <laughs> and that always, always startles me when I hear that because you've heard it, I prayed it when I prayed it to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, yes. right? Yes. But here's a shorthand. Uh, uh, um, we pray that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because we are invoking the trust of the ancestors. We are remembering that if God brought grandmama and granddaddy uh -huh. through that, and great mama and great granddaddy, and all of those who've gone before us, if God brought them through, then we are praying to that same God. We're in the same family. We're in the same lineage. That's why we pray to the God of Abraham. We remember it. We are remembering yeah. who's yeah. We are and where we came from, but, but 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 it's interesting when you get this singular reference to Jacob. Mm -hmm. You might write it off as a shorthand way of praying, but I caution you to take one more look here and to notice who Jacob is. Yes, he's listed among the fathers, but he's also known for more than that. If you've read your Bible, Jacob was the one we call the trickster. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jacob always had an angle. Yeah. He was always going to beat the system. Right. Yeah. Jacob Jacob was, was the one who was full of falsity and negative ambition, always trying to pull one over on somebody, yeah. always giving half the story. Jacob is the one who came in with a gimmick and came in with a plan. He was the one who, when you saw him coming, you got ready to hear something crazy about what he was getting ready to say. You ever met anybody like that? Yeah. You ever had any Jacobs in your life? They always got some kind of angle. Yeah. Some kind of scheme, a scheme, something, something else that they're working on all the time. But don't get mad that they only pray to the God of Jacob in this uh, in this um, uh, psalm. That he, despite the fact that he was a braggadocio trying to make you think that he was more than what he was, this is clue to us to know that these who are praying just to Jacob. Uh, can be can rest assured because all of us have a little Jacob in us. My God. Okay, I'm trying. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be trying to explain. That's good. That's good. When you pray to when when we pray to just the God of Jacob, uh huh. What we are signaling is that Lord, we understand. That you can be the God of Abraham, the father, whom you promised to make the ruler of many nations. Yeah. And we understand that you can be the God of Isaac, who you delivered and who you brought out and who came out of um, Sarah's doing and all that. And you can make that. But when, when we pray to the God of Jacob, what we are saying is, Lord... Here I come standing naked. You know all my stuff. You know who I am. You know I ain't always right. And I ain't always done right. You know I got some schemes up my sleeve. You know I got a history. You know I got some stuff. But I'm so glad I can still pray to you and call you God. And you can still call me child of God. Yeah. You know, I, I, I wish I could explain it the way that I feel it. That, that this God of Jacob, uh, the God of Jacob is the one that we can rely on. That even though we got some underhanded stuff in us. And and, 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 and and that uh, uh, that we've got a history that we may not want everybody to know about, that God is still our God despite the stuff that has gone on before us. Amen. Amen. I love it, I love it, because uh, uh, it, uh, it's as though they open the prayer with the God of Jacob and they close the prayer with the name of the Lord our God. So they start out by saying, Lord, you got to take me as I am. I'm the, I'm, I'm the Jacob person in this. We got some mess. David has some mess. We all got some mess about us. But we're going to close with the God who is in, in the name of the Lord our God because that is the one who else but God would be able to deliver them through what they've gone through. Uh, who else but God could take glory in knowing that Israel uh, does not rely on its own might, that this God is the God who celebrates the fact mm -hmm. that we can come to God realizing that we can't get it done by ourselves. Uh, this is the God who understands that as David heads out to battle, the people are declaring that any winning, any victory is not of David's doing, even as they pray for David to get it done, but uh -huh. the victory comes from God. 
They got to be clear on where the help comes from. Yes. Well, may the Lord answer and protect you, they say. May he send you help. May he support you and remember all your offerings and grant you favor. This was to be the declaration of the people who understand where their help comes from. Yes. Uh -huh. It's as if David is saying in this, I take no glory unto myself. And I want you to understand that everything that happens with us, Everything that happens for us, everything that happens on behalf of us uh -huh. is not because I'm so great, David is saying. It's because God is so good on our behalf. Yeah. That's why their prayer is not for David to deliver them. It was for God to deliver them. Yeah. Though David would be the one going into the battle. They understood that David might be the one in the battle, but if the battle was going to be won, it was going to be God who won it. In other words, we are counting on you to show up, David, yeah. but because that's what kings do. But we are here depending on God to show out because that's what the king of kings is able to do. Yeah. Yeah. We know you are a mighty warrior, David, but only because God made you a warrior. We are pulling for you to win this thing, but all glory and all honor goes to God. Amen. Amen. I lift that up because I believe Dr. King also understood that. Mm -hmm. How else could he have withstood the hoses? Yeah. and the batons mm -hmm. and the jail cells and being spit on and being stabbed and being threatened and yeah. being lied on yeah. but it was only by the grace of God who keeps us with God's keeping power that anybody would be able to withstand so much yeah. there's a lesson in that for we who are the children of God who sometimes think that our fate is in somebody else's hands. Uh -huh. Sometimes when the giants before us are so big, we forget that it's God who has been keeping us all along. Yeah. Yeah. That it's God who's been watching over us and protecting us and helping us and favoring us. And I know you got battles and uh, things and uh, pressing on you in 2024 on every hand. I know 2024 has come in like a roaring lion. My dad. Pull the rug from under somebody's feet, facing some difficulties and some struggles. Already there's been surprises and sickness and death and funerals and yeah. unexpected yeah. bills and yeah. stuff breaking down and rainy days. Already your personal life has been flipped up the upside down for somebody. And yet can we can set aside what the enemy tries to do because as long as God is on our side, Amen. So long as we remember that the Lord is our shepherd and we shall not want. As long as we keep in mind that God be for us, who can be against us? If it has not happened uh, to you yet in 2024, then good. Because either way, I come to remind you that before you go into battle, to stop and pray. Yeah. Before you get into the situation, stop and pray. But if you forgot to pray before the battle, I want to let you know that it's okay to pray in the middle of the battle. I want to let you know that while you're going through, it's okay to say stop everything, hold the presses, I mean to pause here and pray. Because who else but God is going to be able to get me through what I'm going through? Who else but God will be able to deliver me? Verse 6 says, listen, <clears throat> David turns his thing to personal, and instead of having the people pray, he says, now I know. I know that the Lord will help his anointed. Yeah. I know that he will answer him from his holy heaven with mighty victories by his right hand. Let me yeah. say it the way that it really should be written if we were writing it today and correcting the, the grammar and the English. He would say, I know that the Lord will help me. Yes. His anointed. Yes. And he will answer me from his holy heaven with mighty victories by his right hand. Yeah. David expresses confidence in what God is about to do, yeah. even as he heads into the battle. And can yeah. I encourage you, church, to do the same? Be confident as you go into 2024 yeah. that your understanding of how God will work and how God is working in your life will bring victory in the end. Yeah. I believe David could declare these things about God because of the track record and the history that he has had with God. Yeah. God brought him through some tough situations and while I'm not sure which battle he is preparing for in the psalm, the psalm does not tell us which one. We know that he has had many battles. Somebody say many battles. Many He's had many battles and we don't know which one that he was preparing for but what does matter is that he knows that the same God who brought him through the other stuff that he's been through will 
bring him through this battle too. Amen. That the same God who protected him in the fields as a shepherd or boy, fending off the lions and the tigers and the bears from his flock, will be the same God who will fend off whatever is facing him right now. Yes. Will bring him through this thing right now. Now I know this is the Lord who helped me in the cave, he says, and in the valley and the one who helped me uh, while I was going through. I know the Lord has done this for me already and since he's done it already I can take trust. I can believe that the Lord will bring me through this too. Amen. Amen. One who prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Who else but God would give us the power to declare that, that we know that we know that we know because who else but God could have brought us through what we have already gone through. I, I, really, I really want you to pause for a minute and think about the stuff that you've already been through, not just 2023, but uh, 2013 and 2003 and, and, and all way back before then, what God has already brought you through. And then I want you to ask yourself, who else but God could have done it? And who else but God will I place my trust in for, uh, to go forward? For some might trust in chariots and some might trust in horses. Oh, but the trust that we have is in the name of the Lord yes. our God. Yes. Amen. The battle, in other words, is not ours, yeah. but it's the Lord's. Yes. Yes. Amen. I lift that to say sometimes our prayers are just too small. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Sometimes our prayers are just too short. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm not talking length of prayer. I'm talking short in sight yeah, and wow. short in vision. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. all we are asking is that God deliver us from this thing when God is really trying to do a whole transformative yeah. thing in our lives. Sometimes all we're asking is for God to pay this bill when God is trying to work a whole transformative way of how we see our resource. Sometimes our prayers are just too small yeah. and God is trying to do a whole lot more yeah. than what we are praying for. Yes. So that we forget that when we pray our, for our prosperity and our power and our success and our victory, that we, ha we have limited that to the things that we can see and God sees far more yes, than that. Yes, yes. So let us be mindful to not just fight against those things that uh, we think we see, but uh -huh. to be mindful that God has a plan and a will and a way that yes. goes beyond our plan, yeah. our plan. I'm glad this morning, I wrote this in the text because I don't have a shout for you today. I just want you to have an assurance yeah. I don't have a shout for you today. I just want you to know that you know as you go into 24, who, 2024, who else but God yeah. Yeah. could have brought you through? Amen. And who else but God is going to get you through? Yeah. For some trust in chariots and some in horses, yeah. but our pride is in the name of our Lord, of the Lord our God. Whoever David was going up against in this battle, yeah. Yeah. it was someone who was well armed. That's right someone with significant means, yes. someone who was far better trained than he was. That's, right. That's why they use the image of horses and chariots. Horses and chariots were not available to everybody. Yeah. They're trying to let you know that this thing was way bigger than David could handle on his own. And, and, and you had to have some things going on to even be able to have some horses and chariots that David did not have in, in his arsenal to go up against these folks. However, David says, listen, while everybody else is relying on military might, uh -huh. yeah. we rely on the name of the Lord our God. Yes. For the name of, the, of our Lord is a strong tower. Amen. We rely on the name of our Lord, of the Lord our God, because we know something else, something about that as a people. For who else but God? could have delivered us in such a way that we could survive the middle passage, yeah. go through 400 years of enslavement, mm -hmm. get through Jim Crow and Jane Crow, mm -hmm. civil rights, and yeah. the backlashes of today, yeah. and still be standing clothed in our right minds, mm -hmm. still making strides, still proving that we have the greatness of God coursing through our veins, still saying that we are not less than anybody else that's out there, that if we depend on military might, and if our ancestors had depended on military might, they never would have made it because they never had a, would have had what everybody else had. Oh, but no, that's not what got us through. Uh -huh. Who else got 
gotten us through but God? What else yeah. got us through but God? Who else but God could have kept us? For well, we've always been outgunned, outweaponized, outmanned, outdated, and so yes, on. But yes, we've never yes. been outguarded. We've never been outguarded. Yes, I made that up. We have never been outguarded. We learned early on to trust God because you find out quick when God is all you got, God is all you need. You learn for real, for real, that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, we don't know where we would be. That's not a cliche. That's a testimony of who God has been in our lives. It's a testimony. It's a cosign of Lucille Clifton's poem, Come Celebrate With Me, that every day something has tried to come and kill me and fail. It's a repeat of Zora Neale Hurston's musing when she said, sometimes I feel discriminated against, but it doesn't make me angry. It merely, merely astonishes me because how could anybody deny themselves the pleasure of my company? It is beyond me. Rather than get discouraged, she kept her eyes watching God. And that's all I'm saying for you, church, that as we go through 2024, who else but God is going to deliver us? Who else but God is going to keep us? Who else Else but God is going to be able to bring us through yes. the way that God has brought us through before. Who else but God can put a song on the cage bird's heart and hope in the grieving mother's heart and yes. the healing in the widow's hurt and still have all of them declaring and weep that weeping may endure for a night, but joy really does come in the morning. Who else but God? That's how we made it over. It's yeah. how we made it through. It's how we made it out. And thanks be to God that this joy we have, yes. the world didn't give it to us. Yeah. And the world can't take it away. Amen. Some trust in chariots, yes. some in horses, mm -hmm. but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Amen. Amen. The God of Amen. Jacob Amen. shall save us. Yes. God bless you this morning. This is the word of God. For the people of God, we do give thanks unto God. Let the stand, please. The doors of the church are open. If there is one who does not know Jesus in the pardoning of your sins, you heard about him. Mm -hmm. You know it's your grandmama's God. Yes. You know it's the one that we sing to. But you don't know him personally for yourself. Mm -hmm. I want to invite you this morning to have that personal relationship. That you might experience God for yourself. That you can go forward, march forward with the assurance that you've got God on your side. And more importantly, you are on God's side. Yes. God has already issued the invitation through sending his very own son, Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. That God sent his son, Jesus, that you might have everlasting life. Yes. If there's one this morning in the house or on the line that has not made that declaration, yes. we invite you on this day, the second Sunday in a brand new year, to, to take a moment today to come and receive Jesus as your own personal Lord and Savior. You cannot get there on mamas and grandmamas and granddaddy's prayers. That's right. You got to get there on your own, through your own personal Lord. I take that back. You can get some, some distance on mamas and grandmamas and granddaddy's prayers because a whole lot of us are where we are today because somebody prayed for us. Amen. 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 But your salvation, let me be clear, your salvation must come from your own lips. That's right. Where you profess and declare and believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins, that you would accept him as Lord and Savior, that you would declare, I am a sinner, but I want to be a sinner who is saved by that amazing grace that we sang about earlier. The second invitation, maybe you did that long time ago or some time ago and you've lost touch with the church with your church you don't really have a church you just go in hither and yon and to and fro we want to invite you to become a part of a church family to grow in the fear and admonition of the lord with others who are growing in the fear and admonition of the lord to have the grace of god uh, to walk with you as we walk with you and journey with you through it all but to know also that it'll make your joys that much more wonderful 
and it'll make your burdens that much lighter. So we invite you on those two invitations. One is what we call the profession of your faith, that you just got to say it to the Lord. Lord, I want you to be my Savior. I need you in my life because I cannot make it without you. The second one is, Lord, I know in your word you said that I need to be a part of a family that is growing. It's a quicker, the, a fire goes out quicker when there's no other wood to kindle it. When it's not just off by itself. But when we're together, we can kindle for each other. We can, uh, as the old folks say, prop, prop each other up on every week and lean inside. Sometimes I'm leaning and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to stand on my own. I just see somebody come and prop. Yeah, and hold me up. And that's what the church does for one another. We, we build each other up. We hold each other up even as we go through. So once you come on those invitations, let me pray with you. Gracious and almighty God, how we honor and bless your holy name. Lord, we ask that as you tug on somebody's heart this morning, that they no longer are able to hide, that they no longer are able to put it off, that they are no longer able to wait, but they come running, 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 saying, what must I do? I want this salvation that you talk about, preacher. I want to know this Jesus that you declare, preacher. I want to be uh, in alignment with the one who died for my sins. God, we ask now in the name of Jesus that you would move on somebody's heart, that they might um, align with the church instead of hanging out in the rafters, in the balcony somewhere, they might move forward and say yes to you. Yes to your will and yes to your way. We ask all of this, Lord, for those who are watching online to put it in the chat or email us. Text us at 301-649-4449. However it is, Lord, however they move, we ask you, Lord, to give them this moment. They can text me personally at pastor at dayspringthrive.org. God, we ask. We pray. And we believe. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we trust in the name of you, the Lord our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Amen. If you're glad, if you receive that word on today, give God some praise. We're ready to move in 2024 with the power and with the hope of an assurance of who God is and whose you are. Then we are ready to go forward together with you. Say yes to the Lord and say yes to the Lord's way. We're going to have our altar prayer. I know I just prayed that that was a prayer for those who um, uh, to believe and to receive and to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, to accept the church uh, family as their brothers and sisters in Christ. But we're going to have our altar prayer for those who stand in need. You can stay in your seat or you can come forward. For those at home, you can take a position of a posture of prayer, however you may so desire. Let us pray. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God that sees all, that hears all, the God who has gifted us with the ability to choose, but still pricks our hearts and nudges us in a direction that would bring God glory and bring honor to our lives and lead us in a steady path. We come to you right now. We come to you on behalf of your creation, your sons, your daughters, who stand in the need of prayer. You know our heart's desires. You know the areas where we are weak. You know those things that are going in our lives that we haven't shared with anyone, but that trouble us in the midnight hours so that we're not able to sleep. But yet, God, you reminded us this morning with this word that all we need to do is trust in you and that you will move in a way that will be supernatural so that not only will you get glory, but we will have a testimony to say, look what the Lord has done for me. 
For those who are sick, God, we ask that you would stop by their sick room. For those who are caring for loved ones, we ask that you would stand up in them and keep them firm and, and keep them determined to do what they need to do, God. For those who are looking for employment or houses, for those who have lost loved ones, for those who have lost relationships, God, we lift that all to you because only you can transform in those areas. God, even now, we just trust and believe that you are going to move in a supernatural way, not only in Day Spring, but in the community around us and in the world at large. God, we need you like never before because we cannot do it in and of ourselves. You may give us the slingshot, you may give us the rocks, but you would need to give us the strength to take down strongholds. And so we ask God that you would strengthen us and encourage us and help us to look out for one another. So when we see one another leaning God, that we will step in and begin to help prop one another up. Because sometimes we don't want to ask for help, God, because of our own pride, because of our own frustrations, sometimes because of our own embarrassments, because we've gotten ourselves in situations. So help us to be a beacon of your love and power and presence in the lives of not only Day Spring, but in our community, in our home, and throughout the nation. We love you, God. We praise you. We honor you. And we look forward to the testimonies that will come out of your stepping in to be a transforming power in our lives. This we ask in the name of your son, Jesus, and for Jesus' sake. Amen. 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 Just before we prepare uh, for our going home song, I want to ask that you would remember in your prayers, um, uh, Elder Lily White and Robert White um, as she recuperates, but also those who are grieving, um, Renee and Sam Good and the loss of Sam's uh, stepmother, and then also uh, Brother Kenny and Sister Gwen Thompson as Kenny funeralizes his brother on today in Georgia. So please, um, in your prayers this week, remember them um, and lift them up and then show them your acts of kindness. We also call the name of Melvin Barnes and we ask um, that you would be fervent in your prayers for him as well. for what our hearts have felt. And God, even as we sit here in peace, and as we sit in comfort, 
and as we are free to worship you without any hindrances or any danger. We remember those places that are war-torn. We remember people who are fighting against other people for how they look, for how they live, for how they think and how they believe. And as we leave this place, God, we ask forgiveness for the way that we treat humanity. We remember the Ukraine this morning and Russia with its misguided outlook. We remember Palestine and Gaza. We remember, oh God, Israel and even Hamas with its, it, it, its, um, its uh, misguidedness. God, we remember that there are places that are torn up by tornadoes and floods. Mm. That there are places that have been hit by volcanoes, tsunamis, hurricanes, and droughts. There's hunger in the land, Lord. And we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would make us ever mindful as we go off to have our meals and to take in the rest of the day to rest and check the box that we went to church. Remind us, oh God, that there are those who are at the borders, those who are in uh, uh, camps, those who are caught up in prisons for crimes that they did commit and crimes they did not. God help us to be mindful on this weekend where we celebrate the King, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Remind us, O Lord, that you are the King of Kings and that we need to be in work, lockstep, uh, hand-holding, hand-gripping work with you. Who else but you can deliver us? We love you. Now unto you who are able to keep us from falling, and to present us faultless before your glorious throne with exceeding great joy. To you, the only wise God, to you be all glory, all dominion, all majesty, all power, now, henceforth, and forevermore. We give you thanks and praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen and amen. God bless you.